Okay, let's talk about the European ball screen offense. Um, this is an offense that has become incredibly popular in college basketball. You see a lot of teams running this. It's uh, trickled down to the high school level. Uh, you'll see even some NBA teams running it more as sort of like a set play. Um, I'm going to go over the basic alignment, uh, how you can run this with nothing but guards on the floor, how you might run this if you have two traditional posts, and some of the options that you'll get on the three-guard side of the floor. So first, let's talk about the basic alignment of the offense. Uh, once you get players into, into these spots, and you can do this in a number of ways after you run some kind of entry, uh, you're going to have a two-guard side and a, or a two-player side and a three-player side. Uh, this is normally going to be your point guard. After this player passes the ball to either wing, she's going to go away from the ball to create this open side. So you're going to have a ball screen on this side, and then you've got your three-guard side, and there's a lot of things you can do on this side of the floor. Um, I'm going to talk about mostly just the vanilla version of this, and then at the end talk about some of the other uh, things you can do out of this. It's really up to you. Um, what you think your team can handle, what kind of reads they can make. You can keep this as simple as possible. You can allow a few decisions to be made by, by these players over here. Um, and we'll also talk about what you can do if these players are skilled and if they're more traditional low post players, how that can be a good or a bad thing. Um, so first, let's, uh, let's go look at a team from the summer. And this was a team which I've shown on some previous videos. And looking at this, I'm pretty sure every one of these players um, is playing at some level of college basketball now. Uh, you've got various D2 players on the floor here with uh, maybe some NAIA players as well. But the, all these players ended up going to college. So we've made our, our pass here. Let's go ahead and back this up. So... This is our, as you can see, here's, here's our point guard. She's passed here to the wing. And these are mostly two traditional bigs, not really three-point threats, but they were very, very strong players, and you'll see what we try to do with them later. So we're coming off the screen. This post gets in the slot. Point guard's going to the corner, and there's our other guard. So she's coming off the screen. Doesn't like it. Uh, you'll notice in this offense, because of the spacing, when guards tend to use the screen, there's not as much space to get to the rim in this because of this player and where her help's going to be. But again, if you've got five guards and that player is a shooter, that can really be a good thing. Um, but these first few clips, we're going to be doing screen refusals, which is really something that you should stress with your guards if they can get to the rim. So here comes the back cut. So this player gets the ball at the top. She's going to I actually like this to be a pass fake, and so you might get a cheap bucket. Um, the minute that she turns away, this post player who has rolled needs to get back to the top. So in a traditional version of this offense, your, your post players are going to be rolling or screening, rolling, and coming back up. That's sort of their pattern, this little triangle. If they're guards, they can screen and pop to this open corner, but eventually they got to get back to this slot. So this post player's got it in the slot. She's not a shooter from here, so we're not worried about that. So the middle player, and again, in the vanilla version of this, we look, maybe a pass fake. This player's going to cut through to this corner. So then we're going to follow that up, pass the ball to this guard lifting. Her first read here is always, can I refuse this? Which she does immediately and scores. And here's a couple more options of this here. Looking over, there's your back cut, there's your refusal. Another one, really good job here. And you, again, this is something that guards, you need to really teach them to do. Not, do not be afraid to do that. Another good, good job there, draw the foul. Keeping the offense going. There's the cut. Little dribble handoff there. Good. So these next few clips are the guards who, who are using the screen and getting to the rim. Doesn't like it. There's your back cut. DHO. Wide open, wide open three. 
fall screen gets all the way to the rim. Good shooter. Can't give her that. Okay, this is a really good example of what I call rolling a player out of the play. So let's back this up just a bit. So here is our three guard. Here's our here's our our three player side, and here comes our here comes our screen. Um, again, two good players. Both of these kids went on went on on to play D two basketball, and she's going to screen, and this player's going to try to go under, and she just rolls her out of the play, and she even tells her to shoot this if you watch her. Nicely done. Again, screen, attack, downhill, get to the rim. There's your back cut. Good. You don't get this roll as much as you think, um, but it's certainly part of it, and depending on the skill levels of your players. But those two posts could, could catch and play. If you have that, it makes the offense even better. Thought she got fouled there. Screen, little lob, draws a foul. Really good job by this kid here. Just we missed this, but it's, that's that's actually pretty well executed. Again, that was she was such an excellent passing guard. Uh, not 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 the tallest player, but boy, she saw the floor really well. So there's our screen. Just dumped it right to her. I mean, really easy. Okay, so now we're looking at a different part of the offense. So if you've got two post players that are that that can play down low, the high lows that you'll get out of this offense can be very effective. So coming off the screen, don't like it. And we ran this with this team, with this personnel. We didn't run the offense particularly fast because we knew we had these two kids here. So we were really trying to look for this high-low a lot. If you don't have those players or if you have five guards, you can run this offense at a much faster clip. Uh, but this team, we really tried to get the ball there because once it got there, we knew that was pretty much it. And you'll see a few of these right here. But if you like high-low stuff and have two post players that can play, this is this is tough to guard. Just a great pass from that kid. Here's your screen, and watch watch her. I mean, uh, <laughs> uh, she's she's a she's playing uh, D two basketball right now. She comes off that screen. She rolls. She's just not. She <laughs> just moves these kids out of the way. coming off the screen same thing here just bully 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 get it to her that's really hard to guard that another example of it those high lows are really tough in this and this is an example of this kid here who's playing for a top 10 d2 program now that's another good player on the high low layup Cut through. There's your screen. Quick pass on the roll. Bucket. I mean, with this team, we really, really emphasized this action just because it was it was tough for teams to guard. And we'll get to some other examples of if your personnel doesn't quite fit this. Screen, triangle pass really easy okay now here is Duke's men's team and they do this uh, same offense out of a 1-4 set with a UCLA screen where the point guard is going to cut through off the screen they might get this for a layup then they're going to fill out to the corner um, and you've got this is from a few years ago and this is the uh, I believe this is the Ingram kid he's a 6-9 you know guard forward I believe he plays in New Orleans now um, and he could shoot. So now you're now you're going to get some ideas. If if you've got some guards that can shoot, you can run this with five guards without a problem. You won't get the high lows unless you have big guards that you don't mind posting up. But 
Okay, here it cuts through, comes off the screen, and they're going to give your guards that. You're going to get that all day. Here's another example of it. There comes the UCLA screen into a ball screen, slips it right to your shooter. And I think there's one more example. So that's the screen. They got to come out and guard them. Little pick and pop. Drive and back out to your shooter. Okay, so now this is our team, uh, our high school team from two years ago. Uh, this was a team that won, I believe, 16 games. They were they were they were pretty good. Um, and we'll show you some examples here. So there's your UCLA, same thing that Duke did. This uh, this kid here is now playing D1 basketball. She was the best player on the floor. Then we would sometimes put her in this spot to either get kick out threes or or play high low because she could post up. Now, this kid here is a non-scoring threat, and uh, we were scouted. This was a good team we were playing, and they knew they could zone her off. So uh, this is something that you will run into if you run this, and this player can't shoot. They'll just back off, and they'll kind of clog that lane. So you'll see what I mean here. We come off the screen, probably should have shot that, and normally that kid will shoot that. Um, but the, you'll see she was told... Um, she was told do not cross the free throw line against against her, so she would just kind of stand there. That makes this really difficult. Um, but there's our back cut, and we just make a nice play out of this. Uh, always allow your kids to make their own play sometimes and just kind of play a little bit. Now we do it with DHO. Same actions. There's your back cut. Pass. And do a shot. Okay, here's a really good example of that uh, of that high low. Now we've moved players around a little bit. We have our star player now as the point guard, and the kid who was running point has now moved to the other slot, so she could shoot, um, and she was a great passer. So we start off with a little handoff. With this team, we would sometimes throw it to this middle guard and then run the ball screen. That's no problem. You can do that. Um, it takes away any pop actions or screen refusals, but you can still do it. Um, but you'll see here, the watch what happens. This is, this is an important teaching point. If you're playing against teams that hedge like that, uh, this is what you're going to get a lot. Quick swing. For a shot, because let's look at this again. This was a great pass by this kid, but uh, if you have this player trying to take it away, you're going to have one one little easy pass here for a three. But she still threaded the needle. I mean, she was a brilliant passer, and we score. That was a big bucket in that game. Okay, this was our team from last year, uh, a much younger team. Um, all those all those horses from that last team, most of them had graduated. Um, so we're playing with uh, a different group of kids. There's our screen. There's our refusal. Now, this is a guard who we have in this spot. And all we want this kid to do, if she refuses this and you're a shooter, just pop. She kind of follows it and looks, looks to rescreen, which isn't necessarily bad, but trying to get her shots. Okay, let's, let's talk about this here. Um, your, screening, your screening angle is important. Um, I'd like that to be a little bit better, but she does a pretty good job here because she sees where her defender is and she just slips this, but just can't finish. There's our screen. Okay. You got to teach your kids what's a good shot and what's a bad shot. We come off the screen. Now from right there, you shoot that three because th really they don't guard this screen very well at all. A um, couple of issues here. We need better spacing on this side of the floor. We need this player either deep in the corner, and this player's work good, but this is our slot player. She needs to be up here um, because now if we, if we get a kick out, she's going to get a three. Standing here, she's kind of in the way, but they don't guard this particularly well. That needs to be a pull-up three right there, but she keeps going, and now we, we get that, which is exactly what we do not want. Screen. Now we have another guard uh, moving to this spot, which again, you can run this five guards, four guards, doesn't really matter. 
Um, I personally think the the more shooters that you have in these slot spots, the better you're going to be, unless they're just elite low post player like you saw in the earlier clips. Um, so we're coming off the screen. She's going to pop. Nice. Again, you'll get that a lot. It's a really good look for her. Goes away. Now, look at the angle of that screen. It's just not really what we want. But kick out three. Again, if you've got kids that can shoot, they're going to get that shot. There's your back cut. We do a DHO instead. That's fine. Swing. High, low. Good. They help down. Open look. Same action. Another kick out three. In transition, nice job there. She goes under, our shooter pulls it. Skips it over, there's our back cut. Good, nice job on the refusal. So let's, let's, let's check this out. So we have our back cut, she catches. Look how she's playing this almost like she's kind of trying to maybe ice that screen. And this is a really quick little guard who gets the ball, and she just immediately refuses it and gets to the bucket. That's really good. All right, this was um, – we ended up losing this game in overtime, and this team won the league. So we really battled with a really good team. I was really proud of the kids this game. Um, here's another example, and we talked about it earlier. And I, I don't think it matters if you've got guards in the screener spots or not. You need, they, they need to understand that. And I am, I'm right here, and I can remember yelling at this kid to go because you can see her defender is coming. She's, she's above her. And she needs to slip that. Cuts through. Guard on the pick and pop. Back cut. This time she goes. I think this is one of the last last ones. Again, you're going to get a lot of threes in this offense. If you got three point shooters, you will get them in this. Again, this is our, you know, quasi post player. We have a guard playing in the slot. She should be over a little bit more, but it's you know it's okay. And again, you're going to get that shot a lot. So that's the that's the vanilla version of the offense, and it's it, it's a really good offense for ball movement and player movement. It can get predictable if all you do every time on the three player side is just back cut, back cut, back cut. Um, there's a lot of things. I mean, almost an unlimited number of things you can do on that on that three player side of the floor. I'll I'll talk about a couple of those. Um, I mean, one simply is on that back cut. If this is a if it, if it's a big guard, they can just cut and do a quick post up if you want. That's that's fine. Um, I've seen teams that will screen down and slip and that. Um, a couple of ideas that uh, I saw. I think it was UAB that runs this. I think they they do this sometimes. Uh, you can give this middle guard an option, which I think is always good if you if you have kids that that can make some some determinations instead of doing the same thing every time because if you get if you get predictable this defender will just kind of sag off of this and you know they know she's back cutting and there's and they'll kind of jog it and the offense can get bogged down but if this player starts to back off like this you can take a couple hard steps for a like like they're going to back cut and come right back for a DHO and if that's a guard maybe it's a fake handoff get to the rim um, you know, allow them to play a little bit. Don't don't let them be robots because in any continuity offense, I think your kids can get into a habit of just running the offense, and that's where things kind of can get stale. Um, so I like this option, letting this kid do this. Um, another another good option is the flare. So I believe at Canisius, Coach, Coach Witherspoon, who is sort of the the grandfather of this offense. Um, at least in the States, um, he does this almost every time. So you'll have a 
the guard in the corner, when when this player has it, whether it's a post or a guard, I like it if it's a guard who can pass. This player will flare screen for the middle guard, who then flies off to the corner. And if that's a shooter, I think that's a hard action to guard. Um, if it's open, we'll throw it, and then the screener would, would slip, obviously, if on, on that pass. But let's say it's uh, let's say it's not open, so you you've run the flare. One had had screened for two who flared. If five doesn't throw it, one comes right back for the DHO. Or again, if that's a guard, fake it and go, um, and we would just stay in the continuity that way. So you would do the handoff. One tries to drive, doesn't like it. We'll throw it to four. Four swings to three, and then four goes in ball screen, and you're right back in the offense again. Um, I think that's a really good option too. Uh, but it's really up to you what you want your players to do. Um, if you're first going to put this in, I would just have them back cut every time. And then once they're familiar with that, say, okay, you know, maybe we can add a wrinkle here on this side of the floor just to keep defenses honest. Um, but that's the, that's the basic idea behind the European ball screen offense. You can run this with two traditional bigs at the four and five, uh, two, two guards. Uh, I think, you know, the bigger the guard, the better here. But you can run this with one post, one guard. Uh, you can pick and pop with, with guards. You can run this offense, like I showed you earlier, more at a slower pace if you're really trying to get that high-low with two good post players. Or if you've got five guards, this offense can really hum quickly. If, if these kids are always picking and popping, it's boom, 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 swing it. I mean, you don't have to wait because you're not waiting on the high-low. It's You can really get the defense to move if you have five guards on the floor running this. So that's the European ball screen offense, and it's, it's, it's a very, very effective offense, and I think it's something that can get you some pretty good shots.